A groundbreaking vitamin K2 study has just been published with important implications for our health. So let's dive into the paper and then I'll share with you what I personally do with vitamin K2 supplements. Let's get into it. Overall, vitamin K2 is needed to activate a group of proteins called GLA proteins. And by activating these proteins, the hope is that we can stop our blood vessels and other tissues in our body from calcifying because these GLA proteins, they make sure that the calcium stays in our bones as opposed to our blood vessels. That is the hope. And when I recently did a vitamin K2 video, I explained that there were two crucial trials that I was looking forward to reading. And this is one of them. It's published in the Journal of Circulation, and it's called Vitamin K2 and D in Patients with Aortic Valve Calcification, a randomized double-blind clinical trial, and it was published on the 25th of this month, this year, 2022. Now, when going through trials like this, a quick hack to work out if it's a good, robust trial is to have a look at the journal that it was published in. So the fact that this paper is published in the Journal of Circulation, I know going into this paper that it's likely going to be a robust trial. It starts by saying that calcific aortic stenosis is the most common valvular heart disease in high-income countries, so I see a lot of this in the clinic. Essentially, it's where the aortic valve, which is one of the valves in the heart, it becomes calcified and stiff. It gets narrow. And although several trials have attempted to prevent the aortic valve from becoming calcified, there's currently no success. What we do know is that calcification of the aortic valve is a slowly progressive process of great complexity and it's caused by an imbalance between the mechanisms that promote and stop this deposition of calcium. Which brings us on to vitamin K2. So like we've gone through, vitamin K2, it's the most effective cofactor to help prevent arterial calcification. So again, the process of our blood vessels becoming blocked and calcified. And we can see from previous trials that a combination of low vitamin K and vitamin D status, it has been associated with increased all cause death risk compared to people that have got adequate levels of vitamin K and vitamin D. So let's go through how the study was conducted. So it was an investigator initiated multi-center randomized double blind placebo controlled study at four separate Danish hospitals. It included people aged 65 to 74 and they were screened for this calcium buildup using a CT scan. And I really like that. It means we're selecting the correct patient population. So what we want to see is people that have already got some calcium in that aortic valve and we're hoping that vitamin K2 and D can hopefully reduce or slow down the progression of that calcium buildup. A computer randomly assigned which participant would go into which group. So again, we've got two separate groups here. The group that's taking vitamin K2 and vitamin D, as well as the placebo group. And the placebo tablet had identical appearances to the tablet that had vitamin K2 and vitamin D. So the patients were randomly put in a one-to-one -one ratio to either daily supplementation of vitamin K2 in the MK7 version, which is the version that I take, but they were using quite a high dose, 720 micrograms, and they were also taking vitamin D, which was 25 micrograms every day. Patients were followed up for 24 months, and they went under a clinical examination every six months, and this did include a CT scan. Remember, we're using the CT scan to measure the calcium calcium buildup in that aortic valve. This study was designed to be able to detect a 20% difference in the progression of the aortic valve calcification score. So I really like this. They've actually used a robust method to work out how many patients they actually need in this trial to detect a difference. And the number that they came up to was 354 patients. And of the 365 patients that were originally included in the study, 333 completed the study. So that's quite good. We want to make sure that any trial that we're doing, we don't have a large dropout. Because if those patients are dropping out of the study, maybe they're getting side effects or maybe there's some other reason for them to drop out. So the fact that a lot of these patients completed the study means that we've got a good data set. We can also see that the vitamin K2 groups and the placebo groups are roughly the same. So we do know that we're comparing apples to apples in this trial. 
So let's go straight to the primary outcome. Did vitamin K2 and vitamin D slow down the progression of this calcium buildup in the aortic valve? Well, unfortunately, there was no treatment effect for vitamin K2 and vitamin D on the progression of this calcium buildup. So that is a really disappointing result. And in addition, there were no significant changes in the sensitivity analysis after analyzing the 333 patients who completed the study. So even patients that started the study with already quite bad calcium buildup, there was no significant benefit of taking vitamin K2 and vitamin D. And in the secondary outcomes, there was no difference in the effect of vitamin K2 plus vitamin D. The study goes on to conclude that they demonstrated that the combination of vitamin K2 and vitamin D it's not effective in the prevention of the calcium buildup for the aortic valve. Overall, what we've got here is a really well done study. It's robust. We can rely on the methods that these authors used to come up with their data. And unfortunately, the data simply does not support the idea that vitamin K2 and vitamin D can help prevent the calcium buildup in the aortic valve. It's a really disappointing finding. So what are the possible reasons for this disappointing finding? Because the hypothesis is so good that if we can use vitamin K2 to activate the GLA proteins, and therefore those proteins can stop the calcium building up in our blood vessels and keep that calcium in our bones, that's a really strong idea. So why does this data not support it? One possible explanation for these negative results could be that they chose to treat with either too low a dosage or for too short a duration, but they did use quite a high dose here, much higher than what I personally supplement with, and they did follow these patients up for two years. The authors could also see a significant difference in the activated GLA proteins, so this suggests that the dose of vitamin K2, it was sufficient. The authors do say though that it's possible that the calcification process of the aortic valve is more complex, includes mechanisms that may not be blunted by vitamin K, but future trials may want to pre-select patients that have a low vitamin K status and follow them up for a longer time frame. Now I do want to mention that all hope isn't necessarily lost when it comes to vitamin K2 supplements. It might be that the calcium buildup around the aortic valve is too complex and it's not just vitamin K2 and vitamin D that will affect that process. So for example, a recent publication demonstrated that the aortic valve calcification progression, it doesn't associate with coronary artery calcification. That is the one that I'm particularly interested in. I want to make sure that my patient's blood vessels around their hearts are clean as possible and therefore can reduce the chances of heart attacks. And therefore, we do not believe that our findings should discourage such trials because this process may demonstrate important differences from those occurring at the aortic valve. Just to sum things up, in conclusion, supplementation with vitamin K2 in the MK7 form plus vitamin D in patients with severe aortic valve calcification, it was not effective in reducing the progression of that calcium buildup over a two-year period. And while that is a disappointing finding, I'm really pleased that the authors have published this data. It also doesn't necessarily mean that vitamin K2 can't be used to slow down the calcium buildup in the blood vessels around the heart. I'm really excited for that trial to come out. Personally, I will still be using vitamin K2 supplements, so I use the MK7 version and I take around 120 micrograms every day. I do this because there is some data to suggest that it helps to strengthen the bones and it may help reduce the calcium buildup in the blood vessels around the heart. And I'm eagerly awaiting data to either support or deny that idea.